Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Beaker Plays. This is another lunchtime stream where we will be featuring the game The Doors of Trithius, which is available now on Steam Early Access. Uh, even though the game is in Early Access, I highly suggest checking it out as it already has a lot of content. The devs are super engaged with the community and continually adding new features. Um, and even saying that, um, you can see here we have on their website, which I will link to in the video notes, you can see they have an extensive roadmap listed um, on their page with all kinds of things they are still working on in progress and planned. And there is a lot of exciting stuff still planned for this game even. So if you're interested, I highly suggest checking it out. And then also another link I'll throw in the show notes here is the link to the devs YouTube page where they post dev blogs and they talk about how all the things they're thinking about when designing the game and new exciting features and things like that. It's actually really interesting to um, listen to what they're doing as they're making the game. In fact, the last one only came out two days ago. So, uh, they are, like I said, they are pretty active here. So, with that, let's get into the game. Um, so, we are going to create a new character in this game. Uh, so, as I mentioned, this game is a like an RPG roguelike game. So, to start out with, we have to pick a couple things. We'll pick background, skills, traits, um, and then our name. So for the background, there's, I believe, eight different choices here. Uh, we can have the mercenary, the street urchin, the hunter, the brawler, the squire, the traveler, the chef, or the druid. And as you can tell, each comes with certain locked-in um, traits, skills, or abilities, um, and their starting items are determined by your background as well. Um, I think, let's see, what should we start with for this playthrough? I'm thinking we start with the, I did the Hunter one of the recent playthroughs, so either Squire or the Traveler. So let's take a look at these two. So for the Squire, we get a trait, which is focused learning, which the developers have made this UI so amazingly awesome. All of the traits and everything here you can see as I hover over them just automatically show the tooltip that shows exactly what that trait is so you can see what you're getting into right away. So for our focus learning um, for the squire we get 15% weapon mastery experience and then we get to pick one physical trait. We get a minor skill or a major skill in chivalry which represents our courage and resilience in combat. We get to pick two minor skills, and we get Knight's Grace as an ability, which gives us increasing attack speed for 30 turns. And we start with a one-handed weapon, a shield, and heavy armor item. Whereas if we were to go with the Traveler, we get a lot more traits, um, but we, I mean, we don't look like we're getting as many combat abilities. We get 7% wisdom from all sources, but we <laughs> apparently don't know how to barter for anything as we have negative 20% haggling, and I love the flavor text on some of these. This one, sure, that sounds like a reasonable price. Um, and then we get a minor skill in travel, and then two minor skills. I think we're just going to go ahead and pick the traveler. So, as you notice, we get our first skill is a minor skill. We get travel. Uh, incre each travel level increases your overall travel speed by 2%. As you can see, that one's locked in. We can't change it. That was determined by our background. Then we get to pick two more skills, and we have a whole list of skills here we can pick. You know, we already have travel, so we can do botany, cooking, enchanting, survival, reading, alchemy, medicine, chivalry, athletics, or quartermastery. And we get to pick two of these. I am going to go, I think, with... Let's go with cooking, because cooking is a pretty big important thing in order to stay alive in this game. Uh, most of your, you have hunger levels and stuff, 
and you have to learn how to make recipes and cook that stuff to get those to help you stay alive and stay full. Um, so I think we're going to definitely pick cooking and then I can't decide between botany or alchemy or medicine. I think we're going with medicine. Those are kind of my two I've been picking a lot lately. I know I'm not deviating from what I was doing, but we'll see. Now we get to pick traits and for the traveler, remember we get to pick one mental, one speed and one combat. So all of the ones with the red icon are combat. The next ones are mental, and then the last ones are speed. So um, let's go ahead and pick our combat one first. So we can pick brutality, plus two maximum damage. Ooh, that sounds good. Crippling attacks, chance to cripple. Deadly precision gives us crit damage. Highly lethal is crit chance. Man at arms gives us 10% weapon master experience. Ooh, that sounds interesting. And weapon expert gives us accuracy. Oh my, I can't decide between Brutality, Man-at-Arms, or Expert. Um, hmm. The experience would be super nice. Because as you'll see, as we play the game, every time you use the weapon, or as you're using your weapon, you gain experience, which helps unlock new weapon, new abilities or passive um, bonuses. I really think I want to do the based Brutality, though. That 2% max damage is really, really looking good. All right, for our mental trait, we can get more durability, more inventory, haggling, I guess we get for part of our haggling buff, uh, debuff, if you will. Fast learner, trap detection, or slight artisan. I think I'm gonna go fast learner. I'm, I'm all about that leveling up, especially early game here. Then for a speed trait, we get combat trickery. Ooh, a chance to repeat an attack. Fluid motions is attack speed. Long strides is movement speed. Slippery dodge chance. Tenacity is a chance that if a snare star we saw applied, it isn't. Or trap reflex. I am thinking maybe we'll go with... Can't decide between the repeat attack or the attack speed. I think we'll go with the repeat attack. That could be fun. I don't think I've picked that one before. All right, and for this run, we are going to go with the name Arturo. I put that in a random name generator here and found one that started with an A, as I think, um, in case we die, we're just going to keep going through the alphabet. So um, if Arturo dies, we'll pick a name that starts with a B. And right now, I don't think they have, they don't really have, um, male and female or gender um, differences. All the characters seem to look like male. So whenever, I know that's on the roadmap, when they put it out, we'll start picking, um, going between the two on random. So, but we'll start out with Arturo the Traveler. So we're going to hit start. So with that, oh, we look like an older man, older gentleman here. Uh, we come to the main user interface of the Doors of Trithius, and this UI is actually really, really nice, um, especially for this kind of game. Um, some of the UIs are just not very intuitive or um, user-friendly. So we'll kind of start here at the middle. Uh, here's our character. Um, this game is turn-based, I'd say, um, in that each movement is like a game tick, and then things will respond. So you can take as long as you want. Nothing's going to happen as long as you don't move. Or take an action. Um, so each of these little dots would be a time tick or a turn, if you will. Um, so we're in the middle of this room with some doors. Up here at the start, or up here at the top right, we get little tutorial messages. So it says getting started. Go ahead and click on it. Getting started. You've fallen through the ceiling into an ancient temple. Start by looking for more supplies. Click to move, open doors, or loot objects. Um, so we had that at the top, so that's telling us kind of what to do. So let's just keep going over the UI here. Over on the bottom left, we have our weapon masteries, and you can see we get a tooltip. Like I said, this is just the UI, the attention to detail in this UI is just, I absolutely love it. Um, gives you the tooltip, and it also gives you the hotkey for it right there. F1 would give us mastery. Open that tab. So here's where we can view our weapon masteries. So we started with blades. Um, so we have... Um, the kind of the overall category of blades and then a subcategory of swords, kind of like your specialization in it. Specialization in it. Um, 
to start with, we get one focus point for each just for uh, picking that and starting with it. A focus point is basically a, you know, a talent point or however you want to say it and skill point in other RPGs. So um, let's go ahead and look at it. We can, the items highlighted in yellow, we have enough to op to unlock right now. Anything else we don't. So like I said, just attention to detail. Um, we have blade focus, which gives us more experience. Uh, blade specialists reduce the cost of melee abilities and decisive edge gives us a 5% chance to bleed. Um, early in the game, I like to do the ones that give us more experience. We're going to unlock the blade focus. So we used our one point there and let's go down here to swords and we can, we already have sword finesse, which gives us 1% damage. We can get precision, which gives us accuracy or swiftness, which gives us attack speed. I think we're going to go with precision for accuracy right now. So that was our masteries. Then our skills, oops, our skills here um, are the ones we picked. So they're separate from like our weapon masteries. So we have medicine and we actually um, start off with two points in each of the our skills to start with. So for our medicine, I am going to we can unlock passive abilities up here at the top, or we have recipes down here below that we can upgrade or learn basically how to craft those. So I am going to start out with, we're gonna unlock the bandage and the splint recipe. Bandage will help stop bleeding um, and the splint will help remove cripple. Both of those are Happen quite a bit. Um, if we had enough, we'd do the antidote recipe, but sometimes we, in this first little starter dungeon we're in right now, we're not gonna get enough ingredients to really um, craft those. And we do start out with one antidote. For cooking, um, this is an interesting cooking skill. I know other creators have kind of laughed at it, but I actually really like it because it's not just giving you everything at once. It kind of gives you a reason to learn cooking. Uh, so I find this really interesting. You have to learn how to boil water or prepare meat or even peeling um, or cutting vegetables, uh, which I think is just interesting and kind of fun um, and a little different. So um, to start with, and then we can learn recipes down here too. So you can see if we want to learn how to bake a potato, we need to learn how to peel. You see, kind of see there we're in red. I can't really move my mouse over it, but it says the peeling is in red, meaning we don't have that yet. Um, to learn how to make a baked potato for a boiled egg. We have to know boiling and for meat for the roasted haunch, we have to have meat preparation. So I think to start with, we will just unlock boiling and meat preparation for now. Um, and then we'll come back and probably learn peeling to do the potato for traveling focus for travel here. Um, we have a whole bunch of, we have a little bit extra items here to pick from. So we can pick plus view distance, see your current location when viewing the world map. Ooh, that's interesting. Travel fortitude, danger sense. Um, I think let's do the view distance and heck, let's just see where we are on the map. That sounds interesting. So the next tab over here, we're just gonna kind of go from left to right on these on the bottom left here is the stats. You can see our accuracy, our attack range, defense, crit damage. So it gives you all your percentages right here, which is kind of interesting to see. So as you're equipping items and you have all your passives and stuff, um, you know, unlocked, you can see what you have um, for a total percent. And also as I keep, I feel like I keep gushing over the UI decisions here, but you can see how I hover over accuracy. It gives us the description of it and then it gives us a source tells us our base gives us 75 percent, and we have a passive effect that gives us three um i just these little attention to detail is just really nice you can see here maximum damage um shows us we have equipment gives us 12 we have a passive effect that gives us two and it even shows us a calculation down there so i mean like this is just far and away some of the best ui i've seen in a in one of these little roguelike um dungeon crawlers Next up is our character here. You can see uh, it tells us our name, traveler, our background, where where we are in the year, um, wisdom level, which is basically how we level up our character all together, and then travel weariness. And then right here, it shows us all of the passive effects we currently have going on in the game. So 
you know, if we're ever curious, which if we just want to see in one place, which passive effects we already have going here, we, we have that right here in this page. And then magic, which we haven't unlocked yet as the last tab. So now we'll go here to the middle of the screen. Um, first here is our health. We have 100 of 100 health and our energy, which we use to fire off abilities and attack. And we have 100 of 100 there. We have a toolbar here where we have multiple levels of toolbar. We start with only one ability. It is jump. So I'll just click it here and you can see we can jump. And I'm going to go ahead and use it. But you can see here it says it's a 20 turn cooldown and it requires 70 energy. So that's a lot of energy. So if I jump here, you'll notice our energy went down. I think we got some back maybe or something here because we went right back to 35 but it went down because we used that ability and then we have the counter on that ability for how many turns before we can use it again and then under here which we don't have any yet uh, I'll point it out later uh, this little line here is showing us our basically our experience bar and this little orb will kind of flash when we level up when we're ready to level up we'll talk about leveling up later then on the right we have our inventory um, inventory is actually really slick too. Um, you can see we have this first little bubble here. Our dot is all of our inventory. Then we can further filter it down to weapons, armor, potions, um, I'm guessing just materials, scrolls, and treasure. Um, one thing I like about this is we have different options to sort. So we can sort by none, type, by weight, or name. I pretty much always just sort by name unless I'm starting to run out of carry weight in which time I might actually sort by weight and then right next to here you see we have our inventory weight um, where it says we are using 10.4 of our 75 and it has that nice little tool tip uh, it plus 20 weight will become over encumbered then down here on the bottom we have our equipment um, so we start off with a ceremonial saber and anyone that's played an RPG knows that ceremonial blades are usually not very sharp therefore not that decent so We'll probably be looking to replace that as soon as we can. Uh, we just start out with a tunic and some hikers wraps. So that is all of our inventory at the moment. So right now, this it opens by default with your inventory open. Um, we can also go to our quests, which we don't have any quests right now. Um, or reputation. We haven't really found any factions yet, so we don't have reputation, which we'll go over later. We have actions where we can either escape or pass turn. Um, We'll use escape later and then pass turn. I just usually hit space. Don't come down here. It shows you that you can hit space. Crafting menu, which we'll go over later when we get some items. And then just the menu for the menu. Um, there's actually um, yeah, a couple ways to get there. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. I'm actually going to move around here and try to get our energy up just as we pass turns to try to make sure we don't die. So let's just start. Um, and we can zoom in and out. So the scroll wheel let us zoom in and out. We can pan around with the um, with the arrow keys or I think it's A W S D um, to pan. And then let's go ahead and go through here. So we come up to the door. We're gonna hit click or click to open the door, and we'll see we do have a view distance. So um, we can't see over here because that wall is blocking our way. So it doesn't just unlock the whole room. And we have snakes here. So as soon as we did it, oh, we opened that door and we saw an enemy. It popped up our little um, help here for combat. You found an enemy. Click to attack. If you're out of range, your cursor will appeal gray and you're instead moved towards it. Remember, combat is turn-based. You can take as much time as you need between actions, which is something I probably need to do more of. So let's just move here. See that snake is still asleep and my cursor is gray. So let's just, oh, and there it woke up, but it's still gray because I, I can't attack at range. So I'm going to hit space and let that snake come towards me. And now you'll see my cursor is a red or pinkish hue, meaning he's in range. So I'm going to go ahead and attack him. So we hit him for eight and he hit us for three. You can see it up here in our combat log, which I believe you do have to turn on by default. It's not um, enabled. That is in the menu under the options. Um, down here yep enable combat log shows its combat details i find that interesting just so i can kind of see what happened um, so let's keep attacking so we just basically keep clicking on him and we'll attack you notice i missed and it looks like i'm going to get another turn before he gets to go again 
So based on your combat speed and stuff, you may, um, if the other, if the enemy is slower, you may get an extra turn or an extra attack in before they do. So let's, he's in range now. So let's, oh, we got a crit, critical hit for 20. He didn't even hit us. That was nice. Um, I mentioned earlier that this little thin line here is our experience bar. You can see that it's already gone up because we have killed some snakes. So that little orange line there is how much experience we need for the next level. Beds are used for the net leveling up and stuff and to reduce combat weariness, which we'll talk about later. And of course, it wouldn't be a dungeon crawler roguelike game if we couldn't loot things. So these chests here, we can loot uh, the wardrobe, I guess. You can see as I hover over it, my cursor turns into a hand, indicating we can loot that. And then we can get bread or a padded and a padded cap. So we got a cap. We are just going to go ahead and equip that cap right away because it gives us a better chance to dodge and some more resistance. You see our little sprite here uh, updated to show the cap on their head, which I thought was really cool. All right, so we've cleared out this room, so we'll just go into the next room. And we now have an igu junior iguana. Um, right, One thing it'll probably tell me here in a little bit is any enemy you can right click on it and it will tell you a little details about it and it'll also tell you um any little modifiers or anything it has so it's going to tell us this junior iguana is level two and it's tough so it might have has higher health compared to other um, creatures in its level so we can't attack him let's get him And the other thing, if I right click, if it could like apply poison or anything, it would tell us that there too, which is really helpful to determine how you're going to attack certain enemies. He didn't drop anything for us. Boo. All right. So um, one thing I like to do is leave doors open so I can make easy escapes. Well, that's, um, I think, some broken uh, design here is we have a door without a wall on this side, just kind of a floating door. All right, and that brings us to our first little um, thing here, too, is we are now hungry. So up here on the top, it shows us our status effect, and we are hungry. Um, when we're hungry, we will not naturally regenerate health, so that is not very good. So to overcome or hungry, we need to eat something, so we'll just go ahead and eat bread. You see this bread lasts for 50 turns, and it helps with health recovery, so... We see right down here that I'm at 89 of my health. If I click space and just kind of wait turns, you'll see our natural health regeneration is kicking in and we are getting our health back. Um, and that is buffed a little bit by the bread we are eating as well. So I'm gonna just go ahead and move. Let's just keep heading north for a while. Oh, that door is locked. So I guess we'll go around. And we get our first station. All right, we got a snake over there. It's still sleeping. And let's sneak up on it. And then, yep, there. It only took us two hits. That's pretty good. Uh, click on that. We got some oil and some leather. Leather is an ingredient we can use later. So we have that. And then we have a barrel here that we can loot. Oh, we got raw potatoes and we didn't pick peeling. Hindsight, should have picked peeling. Um, but in here we get a meat cleaver, a recipe, flour, and berries. So one thing to note is that even in our skills here, um, there are recipes that we unlocked with just our points, our focus points. But there's also recipes that you have, or things you can cook, but you have to find the recipe for it. So in this case, we have the Umski recipe. And if we click on it, it'll add it to our recipe book. So now, if we go, I'm going to click on... This is a cooking station. So this is where we can cook or one of the places we can cook if we want to. So you click on it and it shows us all of our known recipes. So you can see we, um, we know how, or we have the recipes in our cooking station here, but we um, don't necessarily meet all the requirements. And then that last one we unlocked um, is here now too. We didn't know that before. So, this one, we says scramble the eggs, dice the potato, and slice the meat into thin strips. Fry the whole shebang together until the eggs are fluffy, the potato is golden, and the meat is sizzling. But in order to cook this, we not only have to have a cooking station and meat preparation, but peeling and pan frying along with these ingredients of meat, egg, and potato, which 
we obviously don't have. Um, you can see here, boiled egg, we do know cooking and we know boiling. Of course, we don't have any raw eggs right now. Baked potato, we have potatoes, but we don't know peeling, the little red X there. And then kind of the same here for roasted haunch, we don't have any raw meat yet. So we can't use the cooking station at the moment, um, but it's good to know that it's there if we ever find our ingredients and can come back to it. Um, let's see. Oh, there's two of them. Yep. All right. So I'm going to back away to try to get, make sure I don't get surrounded here. In this game, you can use the doors to your advantage to make sure you can't get surrounded, and I highly suggest doing so. Getting surrounded is the easiest way to die. Uh, and here now it's going to tell us that we can right click any creature to see the details shows our level a list of traits um, And you can hover over those icons. So if I right click here like we did before hover over this trait and it tells us they're tough and then We will look at our focus point one next so next one here is telling us we have focus points You've gained a swords level click on the masteries on the bottom menu to spend your focus points all skills gain focus points on level up, which are used to unlock new abilities, passives, or recipes. So let's go to our masteries, and we have a point in both blades and swords. And actually, if we look over, oh, I thought it was in here. Yep, if we look in our combat log, I did miss it. It'll tell us we level up. You're now level two in swords, which is kind of our indication um, that we should go spend our focus point and then down here it says we're level two in blades i kind of wish there'd be some sort of other um ui indicator like down here or something that kind of flashed or turned colors or something to tell us but that's okay so we click on blades um let's go ahead and we're just going to keep getting more experience on those and for this one do we want to go with speed or accuracy um Let's just keep going with accuracy. I don't like missing. So, all right. Now, just kind of move around this room here, make sure there's nothing else here before we unlock. Got some arrows, but we don't have any bow. Um, potion, unidentified. Notice potions, when you find them, come as unidentified, at least to start the game. So, we will take it. I don't know if we'll necessarily uh, drink it until we get it identified. So in our chest, we found raw meat and an iron walking stick. Another very nice thing about the UI here um, is this walking stick, you'll notice, is a weapon. It says on there it's two-handed and it's bludgeoning. Hold Alt to compare. If I just hold the Alt button, immediately right below it, it compares it, shows the compare, or it shows the our current equipped weapon so we can compare to see if we think it's a good idea. Um, something that's missing in a lot of games where I know I have to go back and forth over tool tips or whatever to just compare and see if I want to switch weapons. So, um, yeah, another nice quality of life thing. Ooh, another antidote. That's good. Antidotes cure um, poison. So we will definitely take an antidote because we only had one. All right, here we are in another room with snakes. Lots of snakes in the starter dungeon. I'd try not to wake the other one up yet. Oh, and we got poison. You'll notice there it says, vine snakes attack poisons you. So if we click on here, right click, you can see vine snake. It tells us he's near death, um, but it says it's poisonous and highly accurate, harmless if left to sleep. So you can see here, um, the snake has penetrating attacks, high armor penetration, and it also has a chance to inflict a poison wound on every attack. So another reason, you know, like you can right click and see what, what enemy they are and what different effects they could have on you. Um, so if this wasn't the starter dungeon, maybe we would want to um, get, take a potion or something ahead of time to try to prevent poison. Also up here on the top right, we've now suffered a wound or status effect. So it'll tell us we've been wounded. Wounds are long lasting status effects and appear on the bottom of the screen above your health right down here. You'll need to find or craft specific items to heal your wounds, such as bandages for bleeds or antidotes to cure poison. So I'm going to come down here again, hover help right away. Just, yeah. Um, tells us damage, deals damage every turn. It does have a small chance to result, move itself over time, or we can treat with an antidote or other medicine, and it shows us what it gives us down there. I'm going to wait, and we're going to kill this snake before we cure our poison. Because if we come back over here on our antidote, 
You'll notice it says it removes all poison wounds, so I'd hate to use it and then this snake just turn around and poison us again. There we go. Now, before we do anything else, we will use that antidote to remove the poison. All right, let's go back over here and get some apples, some old sandals, and herbal tea. Ooh. Old sandals, they're... I don't want to say I want to put them on, but they get rid of our movement speed, which I don't necessarily know if I want to do that. So where was... Oh, let's go up to the cooking station. And we're hungry again. Eat another piece of bread. So now we have... We found a piece of raw meat, so you'll notice our recipe over here on the left is green, showing us that we can, hey, we can make that. So I'm going to go ahead, oh, before we do that, let's open up the skills menu here to show you what this is going to do. So I'm going to open up our cooking tab here, and you'll see right now we only have 20, we have 25 experience points in it. I'm going to click on it, and then we'll make a roasted haunch, because we have enough here. So craft, you'll notice as soon as I did that, um, our cooking XP, or level, went up and we'll do it again just because we have another piece of meat all right now we'll bring a couple of things up here you'll notice now we have or is it two roasted haunch um, items in our inventory which we can use to also fight hunger but it also leveled us up so it says we've gained enough wisdom which is based on our overall character xp to level up sleep in a bed to meditate on what you've learned and level up so as I mentioned before, down here um, in the bottom the menu or the UI elements on the center, you'll see we have this little flashing orb. If I move away from it, it flashes. And when I hover over it, it says we have unspent skill points. Let's sleep in a bed, which luckily there is a bed right down here. So let's go ahead and we want to deep sleep. Enter a deep sleep where you will dream, allowing you to spend your skill points. So we fall asleep and then it gives us some fun little flavor text every time we sleep. Click OK. All right, so I'll say, you dream that you're in a forest and you hear a noise up ahead. You investigate and find a small furry creature cowering in a tree. It looks at you with big, pleading eyes, and you realize that it's a baby fox. You take it home with you and care for it. That was actually one of the more pleasant dreams I've read. Since your last dream, and it'll tell us how we got our XP, um, or wisdom, they call it, um, for leveling up. So we got seven from using medicine for that antidote. So just using that antidote apparently gave us some XP or wisdom. 15 for slaying monsters. 4 from crafting and 5 from cooking food. So in total we've accumulated 1 skill point. So now we can spend our skill points. These are used in those different skills. Um, we can use it to either increase one of the skills we already know. Or if we have discovered a new skill, uh, we can use it to unlock that. So if I say found an alchemy bench i would discover the alchemy skill but i don't have it unlocked until i spend a skill point on it so um i think we'll go ahead and let's do medicine i like to try to stay alive so we now have medicine level three and you'll notice we're level two so if we go on our character sheet here it says wisdom level two so we are now level two um, so let's see, oops, what to do. So in our skills, now for medicine, we are level three because we used our skill point on medicine. And we have one more um, talent point or focus point to use. I think, so some of these later ones you can see here, we have enough focus points, but it says it requires five medicine. So that'd be level five in medicine. So we can't do those right now. So let's go ahead and we'll just unlock that antidote recipe. Maybe if we get enough items for it, we can make some of them. All right, let's go down here. Oh, we found our stairs down. Uh, depending on what we were in the dungeon for, I may just go ahead and go down, but this is a starter dungeon, starter area. So I'm just going to keep exploring because I want to get as much stuff in this one as we can. All right, so this room, we do not want to rush into because we have two snakes and two ratas, which are basically rats. Not particularly dangerous, but hard to hit. So they have quick dodge, or quick, they have a high dodge chance, penetrating attacks, and they have a chance to bleed. So we want to make sure that we, oop, one hit, nice. I want to fight both of these rats before we wake up 
those snakes. Because I do not want to get... Oh, thought maybe I went too far. Sometimes I click wrong and we end up in bad situations. Alright, there we go. Alright, this thing in the middle is a healing font, is a fountain, usually gives us health. And we are at full health, so we are not going to use it right now. So in the barrel, ooh, we found another bandage, that's good. Loot all these barrels. Let's check how we're doing on time here. We have about another five minutes before I have to go back to work. As I mentioned, this is kind of my lunchtime stream here, or recording, which I'm going to try to do a couple times a week um, for this character. And we'll probably alternate between the doors of Trithius and the game Core Keeper, which just came out their newest update, which I've been waiting for for a while. Because um, I wanted to start playing it again, but I was just going to wait for that update before it to, to drop before we did. So I think we'll be playing some Core Keeper on this channel too. You know, as I'm just getting this channel started, um, I played some Core Keeper early and then life happened and I kind of got out of it. So we're going to start over in that game instead of continue the current series we have going, especially with the new update. So stick around for that. Um... So now we have, we made it to the stairs. Um, you can see in this dungeon here, I zoomed out, which I said mentioned you can use the scroll wheel to zoom out and then the arrow keys to pan the map. So you can see, I think we've fully explored this level for what we can. Um, that door was locked. And to be honest, I don't even know how to get past locked doors right now. Um, and I don't see any other doors that we haven't explored. So we are going to go ahead and go down. You'll notice as we went down really quickly, it popped up on the screen there. It said it saved our game. So this game, it's not a, I don't want to say a true roguelike or not, but it does save your game. So Arturo, I have my other, some other characters down below that I've been playing before, but um, Arturo, we had an auto save because we went down to level that we switched, um, switched dungeon levels where it'll auto save. So let's just think we're going to end it here for today. We made it through level one of the starter dungeon and kind of went over the UI and how this game works, which as I mentioned is absolutely awesome. I can't say enough good things about a lot of this game um, and how, you know, inter in interactive with the community, the developers are both on Steam and they also have a Discord server as well. They're very open and they really want this game to be really good. So even though it's an early access, I still highly suggest checking this game out as it is really enjoyable. So with that, thank you for watching this episode of Beaker Plays. As I mentioned, the plan is to try to upload new videos, you know, two or three times a week, depending on work life um, schedule. So if you like what you're watching and want to be notified when new episodes are dropped, remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons and change the bell icon to allow notifications just to make sure you never miss out as we continue on our adventures of our churro. Also, please leave any comments or suggestions um, in the comments below as I try to respond to each and every comment, both positive or negative. Um, as I mentioned, I'm just getting this channel started, so I will take any um, comments, suggestions, criticism, anything of how, um, this, how the videos are doing, whether that's um, you like the format, you think the audio levels are wrong, or just hate the sound of my voice, anything like that, I will take all of that into consideration. So until next time, happy gaming, everybody. Thank you.